Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to take a look at Manjaro, Manjaro Linux Plasma. And this is a distro that I haven't really given any love to for a long time. In fact, it's been nearly a year since I did a review on it, and only a couple at that. So I thought it was about time. And it was actually a comment from Techscape from my last review on my favorite Linux distros, where he had mentioned Manjaro is an outstanding distro. It at least deserved to be mentioned. So what gives? Okay, I added in the what gives part. But anyway, my response was actually that this was just a list of my personal favorites. And, and if you really were going to drill it down, my personal favorites on this particular machine. For example, Arco Linux was like right up there, but it got beat out by Garuda for the Arch Linux. However, I use Arco on my upstairs computer all the time, and I wouldn't switch it for anything because Arco is definitely one of my favorite distros there so really not including a distro really has nothing to do with whether it's quality or not and i got a lot of friends that are running manjaro because i put it on for them so manjaro is really uh, something that i do recommend quite often so there you go there's a mention for manjaro anyway <laughs> moving on so i'm out here at the manjaro website here and their page is looking really nice it's been a long time since i've been out here actually but here on the front page it's showing you that manjaro os is for everyone and i believe it so manjaro has no adverts licenses or fees that respects user privacy and empowers them with full control over their hardware it can be used for development gaming 3d office or home and it can be installed on and this is cool tablets mobile desktops laptops and boards and i can tell you firsthand that i've had no problem at all installing them on almost any of those devices whether it be a tablet check no problem mobile check no problem desktops check no problem laptops check no problem boards eh, well that was a bit of a problem uh, I mean, seriously, I tried everything I could. I mean, I just, I worked on it till midnight and I could not get it to install on a board. And I even tried different kinds. I mean, not only this one, but also on mahogany, oak, cedar, walnut, even high-end cherry. And all the same, I could not get it installed. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe it's just me. I couldn't even find a place to plug the thumb drive in. So yeah i don't know i got nothing oh well i guess four out of five isn't bad anyway <laughs> anyway onward and upward so i'm gonna go over here to the download page real quick and i'm gonna jump up to the download link up here and hit that and it'll take us over here to our download page and here you can see all kinds of additions that are available and so here we got our xfce plasma gnome for our official releases here and then here we even have ARM releases for Raspberry Pi and other devices like that, Pine phones and so forth. And then we have our community editions. And these community editions are really great too. Uh, one, one of them that I've used many times is the Cinnamon desktop. That's actually one of my favorite community editions. Uh, really excellent. Their budgie is great. And even the Mate desktop, they make it look just beautiful. And so those are the three that I've played with the most. However, in this video, I want to go with the Plasma. We haven't explore, explored Plasma in a while. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to hit the download, load this in, and then I'll be right back. Okay, here I am at the boot up screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just boot right in. Then we'll get in the live environment, do a quick install, and make sure it's still easy to install. And then we'll get to explore. So booting in. And all right, getting into the live environment here. And it has a newer look than what I remember. So I'm kind of liking that already. Kind of a 3D look to it. I like it. There's our welcome screen. And just real quick, I'm going to right click here and select display settings. And then I'm going to set this to 1920 by 1080. Hit apply. And that looks way better. So I'm going to keep that. All right. So here we are. Got our welcome screen and really beautiful desktop right off the bat, which is typical for KDE. But Manjaro actually uh, has a new set of icons compared to what I've seen in the past. So I like how it's laid out here. The logo down here looks really great for the welcome screen. It just has a fresh new look since the last time I've been there. So I like that very much. I'm going to go and hit the launch installer button here. And we'll just let this launch and we'll just do a quick install. And it looks like it's got the Calamaries installer, which is great to see. So they have nothing has changed there. I'm glad to see that. 
And so I'm going to go with the default. All the time zone info looks good. And then we'll go with the default keyboard, which is correct. And then partitions. I'm just going to keep erase this select here. And for swap, I guess if I was going to use this, I would probably use uh, swap with hibernate just to activate the hibernation feature. However, not something you have to do, especially in a VM, but uh, why not? And I'm going to go ahead and enter in a username. Stick with my silly one there. And then for a password, we'll just pop in a quick password. And then I'm going to check the use same password for administrator account. And typically I don't log in automatically, but that is an option as well. And I think I misspelled my first password there. All right. Now I'm going to check use the same password and then we'll hit next and install. I'm going to go with install now. Standard disclaimer, letting you know that you're going to delete everything. Wait, I didn't want to delete everything. <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, I did. Okay, I'm good. All right, so now we're going to have to install here and I'm going to let it unpack and do its thing. And this should only take maybe five minutes, roughly, give or take. And so I'm going to pause the video right now and then I'll be right back after the install. Okay, the install is completed here and that didn't take long at all, about six minutes. So I'm going to just hit done here. I'm going to restart the machine and then I'll be right back. All right, here we are in our login screen. Looks like everything was successful. So I'm going to log in here. I typed that wrong. And really nice splash screen. I really like the fresh new look that I see in Manjaro. And at least it's new to me. I haven't really messed with Manjaro in quite a long time. Uh, probably 10 months anyway, at least on their one of their flagship editions here. And there we got our update notifications and so forth and our welcome screen. So real quick, I'm just going to hit our configure display settings again real quick and bring it back up to 1920 by 1080. So we get a more civilized screen. And yeah, I think I'll keep that. So here we go. And there is our welcome screen. And I really like the background too. I like that artwork there with uh, kind of the bamboo shoots in the background there. It gives it that uh, really nice Japanese kind of feel to it. Really beautiful. Worth a mention. So here we are in our welcome screen. And so here we got our three categories, our documentation, support links, and project. And so all that good stuff there. And then our option to launch it at start or to turn it off, which I probably would do if I was comfortable with it now. And here we got our application button. So we can click on that and get a quick access to applications. And I think that these might be applications, extra ones that you can choose. And it's showing here that we got Firefox already installed. But if I wanted to add in Chromium, I could do that right here or Vivaldi and Midori and so forth. And same with any of these clients. So we could actually see kind of get a quick look on what's on here right away. Just looking at this and I see that Thunderbird's installed for our email client and Office Suite. And here on Office, we got only Office. Wow, that's a surprise. I always remember LibreOffice being the default Office install on Manjaro. So that is really cool to see. I personally like only Office quite a bit. I think that's a really great Office suite. I've used it many times and it's actually kind of becoming one of my favorites, actually. So that's kind of nice to see. I like that. Even has ebook software here that you can add for text editors. You want to add something in different like Gedit or like Gedit. You got it right there. Printing support. And so that's installed by default. Our PDF viewer is Ocular. And of course, that's a KDE app. app. And Ocular happens to be one of my favorite PDF viewers. It really is versatile and you can do a lot with Ocular. So a fine choice for sure. And then under our graphic apps, let's see what we got. Nothing's installed by default, but here there's a lot of nice choices. And these are things that I would just add right in. I would add in Blender, GIMP, Inkscape, probably Krita. So really cool. And by the way, while I'm staring at these, I'm going to go down here and just run that update. Oops, I hit the news. And I'm also going to teleport down into the lower right hand corner. So I'm out of the way. <laughs> So cool and groovy. So yes, uh, on a daily driver install or a fresh install, I would definitely be checking some of these. And for now, I think I'm going to just hit Inkscape here and just kind of let it install. Also, I'm going to hit update the system too. So this is something I can do all in one fell swoop. So I can go down here and just pick some extra stuff if I want to. And I'm not sure what they're using for default software for photo viewing because none of these are checked. So if I went up here, I see that one view is the default. So that's pretty cool. And if I wanted to add something else, uh, this would be the place. Uh, view Noir is a really nice one. I like that one. That is cool. And then under our movie stuff, we got VLC player, SM parole, Cody and X player and VLC player is installed by default. I like that because I always, I always install it first thing. VLC player is the player I like a lot. So nice to see that there. And then we got our audio stuff here. Nothing installed. Here. None of these are installed here, these extras. And then recording editing. 
Aiden Live OBS Studio Shotcut. I like that. Uh, that's my editor of choice. So that's one I would use. And so really nice. I could just jump in here and just select one and add it in. And Audacity again, another one I would normally put in on by default. And you got chat software, backup software, and there's time shift, which is installed by default again. Excellent. And a password managers. And these are always great. My favorite is KeePass XC. And that's definitely something I would add in there as well. But the other choices are really great as well. It's really a matter of personal taste. For me, KeePass just happens to be uh, something I've used a long time and really comfortable with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit update here. And I believe what it's going to do is add these softwares in and update the system at the same time. And so now it's asking for optional dependencies and I'll just go ahead and choose everything. I'm good with that. So now it's going to synchronize the database, check for conflicts and all that good stuff. And it's showing the install. So I'm going to hit apply. If I click on the little details thing here, it should kind of give me an idea of what it's doing here. And so now it's updating the keys, which I would normally expect it to do, especially on a first time update here. So it does appear that it is updating the system as well. So kind of getting two things out of the way in one shot. Nice. And so while that's doing its thing, I'm going to just shove that off to the side a little bit and just explore a little bit. So let's take a look at our bottom taskbar here, our panel. And so here we got our show desktop button right there. And so that minimizes everything. So when you hit that, it all disappears and then hit it again, it all comes back. So show desktop, if you're a Windows user, that's the little bar that's all the way over to the right hand corner. And then we got our desktop switcher here our notification panel, a quick link to the Manjaro settings manager. That's nice to see. And then news available. That's something I clicked on accidentally a little while ago. And that looks kind of cool. When you hit that, it brings up this news thing. And so here you can kind of keep up to date on all the latest news that's out there related to, I think, Manjaro itself. And so that is kind of cool. I like the fact that they give you this access to the latest news on their development. So. That is really cool. That's something I haven't seen before. And I'm thinking I like that. And then of course, this is our update notifier and there's 623 available updates. So this should actually change or disappear when the updates are complete. Then we have our audio settings here. So that's good to see. And then our network settings. And then of course our clock. So if we go over here and click on our clock, we can bring up the calendar and you can see that it's the month of June. Yes, and it's the 16th. <laughs> Very good. So nice KDE calendar there. And if you right click, you can also configure your clock, adjust the date and time and so forth all right in here. And I also notice they got alternatives. So alternatives, I never really paid attention before, but uh, I know you get that for like your menu over here if you want an alternative for your file menu or your launcher. Um, but I didn't realize I had that for the other stuff in there. I guess I never looked close enough. So if I wanted an alternative to this clock here. Uh, it gives me some alternative options when I click on it. Then it's showing other types of clocks like the fuzzy clock, binary, or an analog style clock. So that's really cool. I'm, I'm liking that. I don't know if that's a new feature or if it's just something I never noticed before on other things like the taskbar and window buttons and so forth. I think you can probably get the same thing over here for like these. I think these are the icon only. Yeah, task manager. So also has alternatives. And so it's just kind of gives you some other suggestions if you wanted to use like a standard window list, which gives you both the icons and the text beside it and so forth. And I think the task manager is kind of the same way, quite similar, so very cool. And then of course our launcher and they have the launcher set up very nicely. This is a style that I do like here. So I'm liking this. And as we hover over, hover over, we can see all our different things. So under programming, we got our cute designer, which is cool. Cute creator is something you'd want to install if you like developing QT applications, especially if you're real into C++ or you want to integrate it in with Python. A cute creator is really a nice development environment. And then you got games. And so by default, we got Steam installed, but no actual games. Uh, and that's cool because a lot of people aren't gamers. So it kind of gives you the option of adding games if you want to put them on. And then our graphics and software is installing right now. So we'll make a revisit to this area anyway. And we got Firefox installed by default. We got KDE Connect, so you can connect your phone. MHRA notification app. We got Qubit Torrent by default. That's nice to see too. That's something I typically install as well. And there's our VLC, which we saw before, and only Office. Glad to see that on there. That is 
really nice. I'm impressed with that. And then here's our settings, system and utilities. And then something else under here, we got lost and found and help. And if we want to stretch that so it all fits in there so we don't have to scroll, we can just come up here in the corner, I think, or maybe just grab it on top. I think we can stretch this. Maybe not. I might be thinking of XFCE and XFCE can easily stretch the menu, but uh, apparently you can't do that here. Okay, my bad. But let's open Configure App Launcher here and just kind of look at our options here. You can sort applications alphabetically like they do in Windows, starting with Windows 10, I think. So if you like your apps sorted alphabetically, you can do that here. You can configure your search plugins. You can show your favorites in a grid, other applications in a list. That's how it is now. But if we go up here and we look at our favorites, you can see it's in grid style. If you like that grid style, you can also change it for these other things just by selecting in a grid here for show other applications. And if we do that and hit apply, then when we come up, now everything's in a grid. So if you like the grid style all around, then that's where you would change it. Then here we got on our buttons here. So here we got our power button, but you can also show your session buttons if you want down here as well, <clears throat> which typically I don't do because it's kind of overkill, but yeah. So our options, that's what you got there. And then of course you also got show alternatives for your launcher. So if we wanted to go in here and hit show alternatives, it'll show you different types of launchers you can also add in here, even a simple menu, which I don't think I ever looked at that actually. Uh, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit switch just to see what that is. And just like it says, it's simple. So here we got our basic menu over here on the right hand side and it is switching by hovering by default, which I really like. I'm glad to see that. And then our search up here, so you can do a quick search. So if you like a more minimal type launcher, this is pretty cool. Then here we got the selector here. to look at the other stuff down here on the bottom. So yeah, not bad. And I'm assuming that's probably tweakable too. If I went up here and hit configure simple menu, I could go in there and just kind of switch things around. Here we got switch categories on hover by default, which I like. So I would definitely leave that. And here you can show your application name, but you can also add in the description if you like more details. So it's quite simple, just like they said. And then if we explore our other alternatives, of course we got our, by default, I think we're using the application menu, but we also have the app launcher. So if I were to switch over to that, then everything disappears. Hmm. Okay. I guess I didn't want to do that. Not quite sure what happened there, but mm, maybe it's because I've been running the update at the same time and taxing the system too much. Hard to say, but I think I'm going to let the software installer finish doing the updates. And then I'm going to just do a quick restart. So I'll be right back. And hopefully that menu will come back and the taskbar and my icons and the background. Mm. Okay. I'm booted back in. It was only updating for about another minute after I paused the video. So I was almost done with the updates anyway. Not bad. So I got rebooted in and now I'm not seeing the menu. So it seems like the menu disappeared. Not really quite sure what glitched there. Probably because I was screwing around running the updates at the same time. So that's not something I would normally recommend. <laughs> And I'm thinking that's probably what happened. Really not Manjaro's fault, I don't think. So I'm going to have to go back in here and add the widgets again. So I'm opening up the add widgets. And then I'm just going to hit in menu or type in menu. And here we got our simple global and app menu. And I think I did app menu before. So I'm going to hit that. And I'm just going to, oops, I hit it twice. What am I doing? So let me close that. I didn't really expect that to pop there automatically when I clicked on it. I was thinking I'd have to drag that in there. Fascinating. So that's actually a cool thing. I'm going to enter edit mode here and then select this guy and remove it. So we have just one menu and then jump back out of edit mode and we'll close that. And now we hit our application menu. We got a menu standard basic. And so, yeah, this is a nice clean menu here. And if I go up here into configure app menu, we got our different settings for this one. And so it showed up easily now that I not running updates and stuff like that. So here you can sort your applications alphabetically like before. So you go up here and when you look at your stuff, now it's all in alphabetical order. So that's kind of cool. If you like that you can flatten your sub menus to a single level, so you can go like that. That way you don't have sub menus going way out. Of course, I'm kind of not seeing that here anyway, because we don't really have enough stuff on there. So those are kind of the basic options there for this type of menu for the application launcher. So now if we go back to the alternatives, we can choose the other one we never saw, which is application dashboard. So if I hit that and hit switch, it should actually quit. <laughs> and then if we go up here, now we got the full screen like you have in GNOME. So really like the full screen. That's kind of one of my favorite menus, actually. I uh, just kind of like having having this kind of layout. It's really nice. And so you can just scroll down and just kind of see everything at a glance. And you got your hover by categories, hover switching there. 
which is nice. And then also you can view your widgets here by just selecting on the widgets tab. And I really like that too. Even categorized here. So really easy access to widgets, especially if you like messing with widgets all the time. This is just a nice way to get in there and just play with it. And then of course you can configure your application dashboard as well, the same way by right clicking and then sort alphabetically if that's what you prefer. And even change your icon for the down here in the corner. And I believe you can do that on all the menu options there. So very cool. And then I guess for the sake of the review, we can just hit show alternatives again and go back to the original so nobody gets confused there. And so now after switching, we are back in our original settings. As you can see though, our settings are gone now. So I need to change that back if I want to have the grid style just by clicking configure app launcher and then select in a grid or show other applications hit apply and okay and then we're back to where we were nice all right so there you go and now if we go into our applications we ought to see some additional things in here like the graphics app that we installed there inkscape so that's installed we got our internet and i don't think i added anything there multimedia we added in audacity and shotcut and came in flawlessly as expected so there you go looks like the updates and new software went just fine and you can see our updater now no longer has a little symbol on it. And when we mouse over, it shows that it's up to date. Very cool. And so if we look at our settings here, we got our add and remove software. If I remember right, the last time I used Manjaro KDE, I think they were using Octopi. And that was a while ago. So let's just hit that and see what that is. And actually looks like maybe it's Pamac. So if I jump in here to about, and we are using Pamac. Nice. And so this is Pamac with AUR, Flatpak, and Snap support. Very nice. So if we were to go into preferences here and authorize, we jump over to third party. You can see you can enable, enable AUR, Flatpak, and Snap. Of course, I always enable AUR support by default. And then some additional options. You can change your build directory if you prefer. And then for flat packs, I would probably just add both. I like flat packs and I like snap. I have no issues at all with snaps. In fact, sometimes I prefer a snap because they seem to be a little smaller. Sometimes flat packs can get pretty bulky, but there's other times when I really like using a flat pack, especially if I'm having some kind of issue with some software, a flat pack is a great way to kind of resolve that issue because most of the times it does because flat packs are all integrated. And so unless it's related to a, an update in the software itself, a flat pack will usually solve that issue for you. And then here you can even set the frequencies of your updates. Of course, you can opt not to check for updates also if you prefer to do it manually. And so you can click that button off and then you won't get nagged for updates anymore. And then your frequencies, by default, it's every six hours. Personally, I like the Check it every day. So that's how I would change it personally. And then you can even have it automatically download the updates and hide your tray icon. So you can make this disappear down there if you want it to until an update is available. And then we got our parallel downloads for it by default. So that kind of speeds things up and worldwide mirrors, you can narrow that down. If you just want to use mirrors from your country, you can select that and narrow it down a bit. Typically, I just leave these settings by default because they're always fine for me. So here's our PAMAC software manager. And of course, you can browse by categories if you wish and go into like games or productivity. There's zero AD under productivity. You got Firefox and Ocular, password managers, just all kinds of stuff. So things are sorted quite nicely here. And then of course you can also go by group. And this is kind of nice when you want to add another desktop. Here's the Deepin desktop. And that's something I haven't looked at in a while in Manjaro. I think I did a Manjaro Deepin review way back in, I think it might've been November maybe of 2021, give or take. <laughs> and so, yeah, we got i3 in there and then ADE softwares, categories, games and development and so forth. So the groups are really kind of nice. I kind of like using those and it makes it easy to find a desktop if you wanted to install like Cinnamon or Gnome or something like that. Uh, the group sometimes will make them easier to find. And then our repos. And again, I wouldn't change anything in the repos if it were me personally. And so we got our core extra community and multi-lib repos in here. Package manager. And then let's open our dolphin file manager. And as you can see, we got our typical KDE style stuff here. I know I've mentioned many times in the past that I was never real crazy about the, the green colors that Manjaro uses, the sea green there. But actually after not seeing it for a long time, it's somehow refreshing. So yes, I'm kind of surprised that I'm refreshed by that, but I am. But if we were gonna look at our settings here, go up to system settings, we can bring this over and then just kind of look at our different theming here. And by default, we're in the light theme, but you can also select dark right here. So we can just hit that 
and it'll automatically switch us over to a dark theme as soon as I hit apply. And now we're in the dark theme. Yes. So everything's the same except it's dark. Here you can change your animation speed, change your wallpaper. You can also change your wallpaper by right clicking on the desktop and simply selecting configure desktop and wallpaper. However, since we're right here, we might as well just click that button and see what's in there. I'm assuming it's probably the standard KDE wallpaper and it's kind of looking like that, but a few bits of artwork in there that I haven't seen before. So nice. There's bamboo at night. So if you want to add that in there for your dark theme, a lot of these developers kind of like to have night scenes for the dark theme. So you got consistency in the theme, dark background with a dark theme. That's something that a lot of people like. And then you got others that don't like it that way. They want to contrast. And so a lot of people have a a bright background in a dark theme. And so it's all a matter of taste. And for me, it's kind of a matter of the background too. I kind of like the dark background with a dark theme personally. That's kind of cool. It just kind of makes you want to fall asleep. <laughs> Very cool. So lots to choose from here. And I remember a few of these from KDE. And this Altai is pretty cool too. I like that as well. Wow. But overall, I think I'm leaning towards the bamboo here, which is the default. I think they really made a fine choice with the default software background wallpaper there. So I think I'm going to just stick with that. Why not? And then in our desktop folder settings, which is where it put us when we click on that button and then your folder settings. And typically you'd want to keep that on desktop. But if you kind of know what you're doing a little bit, you can change that location around and have different things on your desktop. As you can see by default, there's nothing on the desktop right now. No icons. If we go to icons here, by default, they're arranged in rows. That means that your icons are going to go horizontally across your screen this way. And they'll be laid out in rows rather than the traditional style of columns. So if you like columns better where your icons are stacked up and down, then you would just choose columns here. And you can also lock your icons in place. So if you click that checkbox there, your icons will lock in place. And then you don't have to worry about them being scrambled around after an update and getting one of those surprises. So that's nice to see as well. But like I said, we don't really have any icons on here. So there's really nothing to lock in place, but there's nothing that says you can't add them. So I could just come in here and go to multimedia, for example, right click on shortcut, select add to desktop. And there it is. So now we have it up here and I could lock that in place and hit apply. And then if I try to move it, it'll just stay right where it is. Then you never have to worry about your icons getting all messed up. Oh, there you go. How cool is that? And then here's where you would adjust your icon size. So if you want them smaller, you can back it off a bit, hit apply, and then they're smaller. Or you can make them really tiny <laughs> or really large. Ugh. Personally, I'll just stick with the default. I think the default's good there, which is right in the middle, I think. And then you can even change your text of line text there. So there you have it. Desktop settings. If I move that over and bring this back up. So here we have really our typical KDE settings that you typically see in pretty much all my KDE reviews. So I don't think there's going to be anything too new here except the hardware configuration. That is something that Manjaro does very nicely in integrating into the hardware, into the system settings. And I like how they do that. So here you can get proprietary and open source drivers easily installed through this area here. And you can also auto install open source drivers if you needed to do that. And then here again, kernels, you can easily add and remove kernels and switch them around. So that's really nice to see. They really make it a breeze to do that. And again, that's another customization that Manjaro had done with the system settings, which I really like. And then of course we got our language packages workspace. And so in our workspace behavior, we got things like desktop effects. So if you like the things like wobbly windows and all that cool stuff, you can jump in here. You got magic lamp and squash and all this good stuff. So I know I always like the wobbly windows. If you hit that and hit apply, then you can take your stuff and it'll kind of wobble a little bit. Kind of a subtle wobble actually, but you can make it bigger just by going in here and just increasing your wobbliness a little bit like maybe halfway. And now you get a little more wobble. Nice. Kind of a springy effect. <laughs> so all your effects are right in here. Easy to get to. We got blurring in the background, drop shadows and all that fun stuff. Green edge settings. I normally turn these off because to me, they're kind of annoying when you move something accidentally. So I'll just hit no action. We got our shortcut settings, startup settings here, login screen, search settings, notifications, user settings. User settings is something I typically go in and I'll add a picture for an icon. When you click on that, you can select a default picture or your own picture if you have something. So I'll just choose something that looks like me. Uh, that's a pretty good resemblance. Yeah. Wow. Uncanny. And then I'll just hit my password here. And now our user avatar is changed. And if we go over to our 
launcher menu here, you can see that it's also displaying here next to my name. Excellent. Here you can change your regional formats if you need to change your language or things like that. Online accounts if you're into that stuff where you use Microsoft or any other kind of online account, that would be the place. Connection settings, input devices. So here we got like our mouse and keyboard settings. And typically I like having NumLock on startup. So I would turn that on personally. And then that way your NumLock will always be on because I use that quite a bit. And then here's your mouse setting. So if you're a lefty, you can select left-handed mode and then that'll reverse your mouse and other settings as well. So that's something I mainly will check on myself. And then our printers, which are already installed. However, since I don't have a device hooked up, there's not going to be anything listed here. However, I could click that button and it would auto detect a printer if I had one hooked up. Nice. And then your removable storage settings. Then we have about, about this system. So here it's showing that we're running Plasma 5.24.5, nice. Running X11 on the graphics, which I like too, because in my opinion, I don't think Wayland is quite ready for prime time. So glad to see X11 there by default. And then our processor and memory and so forth, all looking good. And then we have our systemd info down here for you advanced users. So this will give you something to play with. <laughs> so our system settings, nice, excellent. And I'm liking the dark theme. Actually, so it's just kind of got that look I like. So I'm not sure I would change anything theme wise either. Very cool. So I think we have pretty much covered all the cool stuff here on Manjaro KDE. So it's got to be time for my three and a half cents. And I got to tell you, Manjaro KDE is looking really good. I love this Plasma desktop. It's running really smooth. It seems that Manjaro has really got things together here like they always do. And I'm going to just open up console real quick. I don't think HTOP is installed by default, but just kind of want to see the resource usage. And it is installed. Wow, totally wasn't expecting that. So let's pop that up a little bit and you can see it's using 709 megs of resources. Wow, that's really good actually, especially all the stuff I've been doing here, playing around and even have the file manager open and it's still jumping under 700 every so often, but uh, 710 kind of steady right there is really impressive. Plasma has really come a long way with their resource management. I mean, they're right there with XFCE and so, I think with all that you get with Plasma, that is really impressive. I'm liking to see that for sure. So would I still recommend Manjaro? Heck yeah. In fact, Manjaro is something I almost never have any issues with. And another advantage with Manjaro is that they hold back their updates a little bit. So when something new comes out, like a new update to some software that you might be using, those are held back for a couple of weeks just to make sure that they're stable. So if you're using some kind of software and you're running regular Arch, sometimes you can get an update and then the thing breaks on you and you're kind of out of luck unless you can get a flat pack working or something. But uh, then you're stuck having to do a bunch of work trying to revert it. And sometimes that's not as always as straightforward as it seems. So Manjaro tries to avoid those little things by holding things back a little bit, but not too much, usually maybe around a couple weeks typically. And then when they get the all clear, then they'll add it into their package manager and then you'll get the update. So that is, in my opinion, a really nice compromise with stability and being somewhat cutting edge. So that's something that's cool. Now in the past, I used to use Manjaro all the time and sometimes I would just kind of run into issues with it. But I think more than anything, I probably just got bored and wanted to switch to something else just because, well, why do you get a new car? Because you need to change the scenery. And so that's probably the biggest reason I switched away from Manjaro is just change of scenery. <laughs> and I guess that's not a bad reason to move away from it. But other than that, I can't really think of any reasons to move away from it. So Manjaro really is excellent. It's stable. I know I've heard some political discussions about their development teams and so forth, but you know, I don't really pay much attention to that anyway. All I care about is does it work? <laughs> and it does. So yes, whether useful or not, that's my opinion on it. So Manjaro still looks like it's ruling the roost here with the mainstream, especially with people coming over from other OSs like Windows or Mac. And if you want to get right into Manjaro and kind of be cutting edge with Arch, then Manjaro is a great way to start, especially if you're not technically inclined and you're not somebody that wants to install Arch the Arch way, but maybe you want to have Arch, but you're one of those people that know enough to be dangerous. So Manjaro just does everything for you and it just works. You don't have to worry about 
printers typically and drivers and so forth. So typically you would probably have no problem at all setting this up. It's kind of like a Mac. You just plug it in and it works. <laughs> so there you go. Manjaro, absolutely recommend it. And if you need something stable and you want to go into something like Plasma, XFCE, or even one of the community spins like Cinnamon or what have you, give them a try. You're definitely not going to regret it. Manjaro is in my list of top-notch distros and deserves two thumbs up. And with that, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.